Good day everyone. I'm Michael. And I'm using a text-to-speech program to have a more clear speech and audio. C-Sharp supports multidimensional arrays up to 32 dimensions. The multidimensional array can be declared by adding commas in the square brackets. For example, if you put a comma inside the square brackets, this declares a two-dimensional array. And if you put two commas, this declares a three-dimensional array, and so on. These are the sample of how we declare a two-dimensional array, three-dimensional array, four-dimensional array, and five-dimensional array. Here is how we initialize a two-dimensional array. Technically, a two-dimensional array is an array inside an array. This number inside the brackets defines the number of rows and columns. The first rank, which is 3, denotes the number of rows, and the second rank, which is 2, defines the number of columns. Here is an illustration of a two-dimensional array divided into rows and columns. Now, how are we going to access the elements of a two-dimensional array? Here is an example of how to get and print the elements of a two-dimensional array. Remember that a two-dimensional array is like a table that has columns and rows. To access their value, we simply get the index number of the row and column where the value is positioned. So for example we want to get the value of 1. If you look at the array, 1 is positioned at row 0 and column 0. So 0 0 is the combination of numbers we need to pass to the 2D array. So this statement will print 2. This is statement is 3, and so on. Now, let's understand the three-dimensional array. The following declares and initializes three-dimensional arrays. Now if we want to get 2 in the array, we need to know its particular position in the array. The first number in the array is the index of the row. The second number is the index of the column. Now since that, a three-dimensional array is an array within an array within an array. The third number is its position in the array, and 2 is positioned at index 1. For our self-check, what will be the output of the following code? You can comment your answer down below. That's all for this video lesson. If you have questions, suggestions, something to add, or you think something is missing or incorrect to the lesson, please let me know. Again, this is Michael, thank you and see you at my next video lesson. Keep safe everyone.